Hello, hello everybody. I hope you're all doing really well. Uh, Isle of Mole, we're just at the tail end of our trip to the island. Uh, it's been really, a really great trip. Uh, this place is just beautiful, but of course, uh, good weather really helps in Scotland and uh, we've been blessed with it. Uh, actually, this has been the cloudiest day since we've been here. I think we've been here for four days now. So today we're taking the ferry back over to uh, the mainland and we're heading uh, to Glasgow to pick up some uh, workshop students of Gavin's. So we'll be heading into probably the usual areas, Glencoe, Isle of Skye and good stuff like that. Now, as promised, uh, I do have a bunch of questions that people asked me. I was going to put it up last weekend, but I managed to squeeze a video together at the waterfall on Vancouver Island. Uh, but this week, uh, I'm not going to be able to uh, put a video together, so I thought I would do this. So I apologize to those of you that were kind of hoping to get uh, a video from Scotland. So without further ado, why don't I go to the questions straight away and, uh, and see if I can answer them the best I can. Right, I have to put my spectacles on. All right, now I won't, probably won't go through all the questions because there's quite a few here and uh, then the video would take hours to, uh, to put together. First question is from Nick Page. I don't know who Nick Page is, but he says, if Gavin is the portly prince, what am I? Well, Nick, uh, since I've met you, I think we should call you Baron Von Page. Uh, I think the name suits you just perfectly. <laughs> Okay, this question is from uh, Jennifer Sayers. Uh, my question, what is your favorite most used lens and did you bring your photographer of the year trophy for Gavin? <laughs> well, uh, I actually my last, or the video before last, I, I kind of answered the question about the lens, but I would say that my most used lens, not my favorite lens, but my most used lens is the 24 to 120, I'm sad to say. Actually, I'm not sad to say. It's a, it's a great lens. I, I really like using it. And it's probably my favorite focal length for sure. Just a good all round lens. So if you are thinking of just getting one lens, then I would probably go with that. The problem with the really extreme uh, zoom, say from 28 to 300, is that you know, the quality starts to really go downhill quickly when you start to have such extremes in zoom. So you're better to have smaller increments like 14 to 24, uh, 24 to 70 is, is a better lens. But, you know, 24 to 120, I just like that extra little bit of focal length, uh, for mostly for backpacking. If I was just working out of my car, then I would probably get the, the 70 to, um, uh, sorry, the 24 to 70. And will I be bringing my trophy? You'll have to wait and see. All right, uh, next question. Uh, this is from Travel with Jean. Do you recommend some good books about landscape photography? As much visuals than essays about the art. Greetings from France. Uh, it's been quite some time that I've bought any books. I used to buy books all the time when I first started and it was a great way to get inspiration. And even now it still is because uh, the, the, the image quality is so much better in books and you can keep referring to it. On the internet, you know, I mean, most of the images I look at now are either on uh, Instagram or Flickr, which uh, isn't really that great. Um, some of the books that I recommend, um, there's one in particular that I really like by a photographer named Joseph Holmes. Uh, he, uh, I think he only came up with one or two books and his books aren't for sale anymore. You'd have to look in used bookstores or look on, online, but he has some, some really beautiful, well uh, printed books. Uh, Christopher Burkett also has some beautifully printed books. Uh, his photography, I, I, I like his photography, but it's not my favorite photography. I, I really like actually Charles Kramer. Charlie, um, unfortunately, only ever came up with one book. Um, hopefully he'll come up with more in the future, but uh, I really love Charlie's images. Um, Theo Bosbom is another photographer that I really admire, and uh, I think he has a number of books out. Uh, Sorry, I couldn't be more specific. It's been so so long that I've looked at books that uh, 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 photography books that uh, 
I can't remember any that stand stand out in the t on the top of my head, to be honest with you. Here's one from Ryan Bentley. Uh, when is your photography book coming out and is it going to have previously unreleased photos in it? Uh, it's a little bit slow right now because the, the publisher that I'm, I'm going with, um, he's not a massive company, so he's, he's, he has other books on the go right now. Uh, so, but we'll probably, we're probably gonna get started at uh, the end of May, uh, possibly June. I'm guessing that the book will be out uh, just before the end of the year, but I will keep you updated. Uh, the best way to do that is to just uh, subscribe to my newsletter or go to kozu, that's K-O-Z-U books.com and uh, they'll keep you updated either way or I'll just post on, on, um, on uh, YouTube here if you don't want to sign up for any kind of newsletters. Okay, here's one from Richard. Uh, what tutorials in Lightroom Photoshop do you watch to improve? Uh, there were a number of people that I watched videos from. Um, there was Ted, Ted Gore, uh, Ryan Dyer, uh, Sean Bagshaw. Those are the three that uh, are on the top of my head. I don't, the, the problem with tutorials is that I, you know, I'll learn something and it, unless I use it a lot, then I just forget how to do it. So most of the time now, I just look on YouTube. I'll just type in what I want to know, and usually it comes up, and then I can kind of refresh my memory. Uh, the tutorials, I think tutorials are great, especially video tutorials, because you keep going back to them. Uh, but what I usually take from them is just small little bits that I perhaps can use in my own uh, post-processing, and then I take those ideas and, and, and use those rather than just copying that photographer's uh, whole process because otherwise then your images start to look like theirs, which is not really ideal. Okay, Andrew Benbow, uh, light or composition? Do you need both or can you make a good landscape photo with only one? Uh, that's a good question. I would say that um, it's always been about the light for me. Some people might disagree uh, and say composition is more important. I would definitely go with light as being the most important. Composition is definitely a close second because if you don't have the two, then your, your image is probably going to fail. But it's usually because of light. Uh, like on this trip, there's been a number of times uh, where I've had some really great compositions or, or compositions that I'm really happy with, but the light has not been ideal. So luckily, uh, what you're able to do now is take those images into Lightroom or, or Photoshop and create the illusion of light by dodging, burning, uh, and, and other techniques in those programs. Um, if you, I, I guess if you take an image with great light but the, the composition is really poor, then you can't really change it unless you start cropping things and that might improve things. But uh, it's, it's hard to say because I'm, I'm kind of contradicting myself here. I'm saying that light is the most important, but then I'm saying, well, okay, so I'm, I'm kind of contradicting myself here because I, I'm saying on the one hand that the light is most important, but then I'm saying, well, if you don't have good composition, then your, your image will probably fall flat. So uh, I don't know. I always go with, with good light. Uh, light usually directs me in, in what direction I'm going to take in my photo taking process, I guess. So I, I definitely would go with light first and composition a close second. Uh, here's one from Mikkel. It's kind of a long question. Hi, uh, a bit of a technical question here. I would appreciate it a lot if you explain a bit your thought process and processing steps when combining shots taken at different shutter speeds and different ISO, as in the beautiful images you've shown in your video when landscape photography plans go wrong. Thanks for the knowledge and fantastic place you share with us. Uh, thanks, Mikkel. Uh, actually, I did a video about that um, um, some time ago, and if you look through my channel, you will find it uh, where I combine images. I think it was with uh, water. I'll have a look for it and see if I can find it. Uh, I'll try to link, leave a link to the video if I can remember up in the corner here, but I, I did make a video about that. Okay, so this one from C. Uh, Sandgren. Thanks, C. Sandgren. Okay, serious question. What photographer has influenced you the most in your landscape photography? Was there one photographer who you admired way in the beginning of your career? 
there was. Um, the very first photographer that I really enjoyed uh, their images was actually John Shaw. John has been around for many, many years. Uh, his was the first book that I looked through. I think it was the, what was it called now? Oh, I can't remember the name of it. It was, he, he wrote it back in the 80s, uh, but I was just blown away by his photography. They were just so sharp and, and the clarity and the colors and, and, um, and it was a how-to book. So that's what I went with. Uh, since that time, there are other photographers that I really admire. Uh, Theo Bosbaum is one that I really enjoy now, uh, just because his photography is just so different. He thinks way outside of the box than a lot of us do. And he comes away with, with images that, uh, you know, like a scene like this that isn't terribly inspiring for me photographically. Uh, Theo is the type of photographer that will come away with something just stunning. Uh, Charlie Kramer, who I mentioned earlier, I really love Charlie's uh, photography. Uh, there was most of the photographers that I admired are, are older photographers, or they're not around anymore. Uh, large format photographers. Uh, Jack Dye Kinga was another one, or he's still around uh, that I really enjoy. Uh, there was a photographer from Washington named Pat O'Hara. Uh, he had some beautiful imagery from uh, the Olympic Mountains and all along the Pacific Northwest. Uh, who else was there? Uh, Larry Ulrich, uh, Carl Clifton, they're all four by five uh, photographers. And I think most of them are still around today doing their own thing. Here's another one from C. Sandren, Sandgren, sorry, C. Sandgren, if I'm pronouncing your name wrong. What backpack are you using? Also, Karen's pack looks better sized for me. So would you share what she was carrying in the videos in China? <laughs> well, actually, the, the backpack that Karen was uh, carrying is actually just a big duffel bag from Patagonia. Uh, I have one as, as well. It's not the most comfortable thing for long backpacking trips. It's just uh, to get you from point A to point B, say from you know the, the airport uh, luggage area to the taxi kind of deal so it's not really comfortable uh, the backpack that i'm using for my photography is actually uh, it's a ski pack from uh, mammut uh, the reason why i use it it has a, a rear opening and i did a video about that some time ago uh, uh, what's in my bag the very first one that i did i'll probably be changing bags shortly uh, i'm going to be trying out some of the shimoda uh, backpacks. I'm just waiting for them to send me one. Um, Nick Page has one and I, it looks really interesting as does Simon Baxter but I haven't actually tried one out yet so I'm not sure. They look very comfortable and I've heard great things about them so I have high hopes. The Mamu bag uh, has been great uh, but I do carry a lot of stuff and I notice that the straps are starting to stretch and get a little bit uncomfortable. I've had it for Two, two years now so it's done me well I use it a lot so you know it's starting to wear <laughs> like everything in this life <laughs> uh, here's one I noticed you often shoot with the Nikon 24 to 120 I have that lens and rarely take it off my camera I noticed that you very often shoot at ISO 64 I shoot with a D750 and I very often shoot at ISO 50 why do you sh why do you choose ISO 64 and not ISO 50 uh, the reason is, is that the, uh, the D850 doesn't go to ISO 50. Uh, the lowest setting is ISO 64. And then there are a number of settings that you go even lower than that, uh, down to uh, ISO 31. Uh, that's the only reason. Uh, Christopher Harris, uh, how long will you be in Scotland and are you going to the Isle of Skye? Only asking as I'm off to the Skye on the 17th. I'm not sure actually, <laughs> this is actually Gavin's trip. I'm just tagging along. Um, we're leaving today. Uh, what, I'm not even sure what the day is today. Uh, I think we're, I'm not sure. It's Isla Sky. Yeah, I'm not sure, sorry. <laughs> I really don't know. Um, we're in Scotland for until I think the 23rd and then we're off to the Faroe Islands for a week and then back to uh, Scotland for just a, a day or so and then uh, I might be heading down to Huddersfield for an evening uh, to meet up with Gary Goff but I haven't 
fully made, full arrangements yet. It's just uh, getting around is a bit difficult for me because I'm not using a, I don't have a car. I'm just tagging along with, with Gavin. Um, so I, I can't give you a full itinerary. And I don't know if I want to anyway, because I, I don't want people just popping up all of a sudden and getting in my photos. <laughs> uh, here's one from Bobby. Okay, Bobby, I don't know if I could pronounce your surname. Uh, Baba Leskos, or Leskos. How often do you go out and scout, sh shoot photos? And how much would you say your success rate in getting a great photo is? Um, I try to get out at least once a week, uh, for obvious reasons, for these videos. Uh, sometimes I get out twice a week. Uh, as far as scouting, I don't do an awful lot of scouting. I just generally go to an area and try to get shots while I'm there. Now that does make it a little tricky, but I kind of like it like that. I like the unpredictable nature of just showing up to an area and seeing what I can get. Like on the Isle of Mull here, uh, a lot of the areas that we've gone to, I've never seen before. We just show up and start exploring. Now, granted, if you go back a number of times, then eventually you'll probably get better shots. Uh, but I think I've, I've got some half decent shots. I don't take a lot of photos. What I usually do is I'll find a, an area or, or a, a situation where I think the composition's going to work and I'll just keep working in it, working it. I'll just stay with that one scene and just keep going until I think I've got something. Uh, my success rate, hard to say. I mean, lately I've been really uh, quite lucky, but I think it's because uh, I'm out a lot. I think the key to good photography is definitely uh, being out as much as you can. Reading about photography, looking at pictures, talking about photography is great, but it's no substitute for actually going out and, and trying to make images. So going out once or twice a week is a lot, and uh, my success rate has, has ballooned since, since I've started doing that. Uh, if you were just going out once a month, then yeah, it would probably be pretty hard to come away with, with some keepers, I, I think. And, and I think that's the problem with, with most of probably you guys. Uh, you know, you'll have regular jobs, and uh, you know, when the weekend comes, you want to try and get uh, as many successful images as possible. Uh, and yeah, it's a difficult, you, you really have to be out there. It's, it's like any art form or any kind of activity. The more you do it, uh, the better your success rate and photography is no different. All right. We're just moving along like lightning here. Uh, next question, Silhouette Demon. Hey, Adam. Are you meeting Nick Page on this trip? Uh, yes, we have met up with Nick and uh, Tom Heaton, and they've left already. Uh, Tom was only here for a day or two, and Nick was here for almost a week, I, I believe. He was here for several days before we got here, and he had to fly back. But uh, yeah, it was great meeting up with those guys again, and uh, I'm sure that we will uh, do it again very, very soon. Uh, James uh, Burns uh, says, are you going to the Northern Photo Show in Reged this year, Adam? Uh, unfortunately not. I would have liked to because I really enjoyed that show. Uh, it's just great being in the Lake District and, uh, and the show was just, it was nice, nice and small. Uh, but unfortunately not this year. Hopefully, maybe next year. Okay, Samuel uh, Augustine asks, have you been a photographer your whole life or like after you retired? Uh, that's a little cheeky. <laughs> uh, I wish I had retired, but uh, I'm not quite old enough, and I don't think I could at this stage anyway. No, I've been a photographer since 90, 1992, so quite a long time. Uh, I used to work mostly in the magazine industry, taking photographs for magazines, and the bottom fell out of that, so now I'm doing this. Um, before I was a photographer, I actually taught rock climbing for quite a number of years. Okay, here's a question from Al Evans. After seeing yourself and the portly prints using the breakthrough filters, I'm looking at getting a couple with built-in ND. Are they worth the money as they are at a higher end of price range? Uh, I really like using the, the uh, breakthrough filters. Uh, 
Now I do have an affiliation with them. So yes, I, I do make money off the affiliate link. And that's one of the ways that I make a living out of photography. Uh, but having said that, I only really push uh, gear that I'm actually using that I and that I believe in. And Breakthrough is one of those companies. Uh, as far as being worth uh, the money, I think so, because it's a great idea. It's, you don't have to stack filters, and any time you can carry less gear is, is good. Uh, I use them quite a bit when I'm photographing uh, waterfalls, because a lot of the times I'll, using a, I'll be using a really low ISO, and then I'll put a polarizer on just a regular one, and it's still not slow enough. So the, the combination of the ND filter and the polarizer, I, I think it works great. So, yeah, I, th I think they're worth the money. Uh, here's one from David Penner. Uh, what is the most common mistake landscape photographers make? Uh, probably uh, sharpness. Um, if your image is not sharp or out of focus, then there's absolutely nothing you can do to save it <laughs> except post it on instagram where people can't see how blurry it is which is what i do <laughs> that's <laughs> that's the common mistake that i've made in the past and keep making uh haven't quite hit that focus right and it's a real uh bummer when you do that but it happens but i, I would say that's the most common one